Hey friends, it's Laura with Laura B. Flosstube. Welcome or welcome back. I'm so glad you joined me today. This is Flosstube 61. It is July 9th, 2024. I'm coming to you from the beautiful Columbia, Missouri, home of the Tigers, M-I-Z. So let's talk crafting. Oh my goodness, I have so much stuff to share with you. I have some cross stitch updates, some quilting updates, some other project updates, and I have a big announcement about the next sew along. So without further ado, we're gonna turn our time to cross stitch and talk about what I've gotten done in the last two weeks. Okay, so for cross stitch, first up is the Pansy Patch Quilts and Stitchery, Houses on Pumpkin Lane. I am doing all nine of them as a one stitch, one great big piece of 28 count Magana. So last time we spoke, I was so close with the Chrysanthemum House, but not quite finished. Well, look, looky here. So I now have the Chrysanthemum House completely done. So that is finished and off my list. That was a July goal to get this one finished and to get the um, next house, which is the Maple House, started. Now, I do not have the Maple House started yet, but I do have the first two houses in the series completely stitched. So here's the first one, which is the Pumpkin House, and again, the second one, which is the Chrysanthemum House. And I'll give you um, a little peek at the Maple House. Here's the the chart artwork for it. So I do plan on starting that one probably this week or next. I should have an update on the Maple House before the next floss tube. All right, next up is the Signpost Stitcher by Colorado Cross Stitcher. And I am doing the large piece for this um, pattern. And I am doing it on a 28 count Lugana. It's an oatmeal, I'm um, sorry, it's wheat. Wheat Lugana. Um, I am not using the call for colors. If you're interested in the colors I have selected, they are all listed right here. You can do a screenshot. And the finished size for this on the 14 count, oh, I am so sorry, it's mushroom, 28 count mushroom Lugana. Um, a 14 count will finish at 14 and a half, basically by eight inches. So this is a rather large stitch. Did not realize that when I started it. Uh, last time I shared that I had the border completed and guess what? I have not made any progress on this stitch. It is stayed in its cute little bag and I will show you why momentarily. Um, but I do plan on doing some more stitching on this before our next floss tube in two weeks. Next up is the Cabinet of Curiosities. This was a stitch along in 2022 with Stitchonomy. Um, Alyssa does amazing patterns. She has an Etsy shop where you can get all of her past sew alongs as charts. And she even has like bonus charts where you can switch them out if there's some in there that you don't like. Um, so the Cabinet of Curiosities is what I started working on and I've had it kitted up for two years. I kitted this up when they were doing the stitch along and I just never started it. I found it in my pile and I thought, you know what, this is the year. So let's get started. I have gotten pretty much all of the border done. Um, there is definitely some straight stitching to do in this um, columns on the sides on the cabinet. And um, there's some back stitching to do on the bottom as well. Now I did change the bottom. You may have noticed from the picture that I shared. Um, the curiosities down here is supposed to have the year. But since I'm two years behind, I couldn't decide if I want to do 2022 to show that was the year that the stitch along happened, or 2024, which is the year that I'm stitching it. And then I just decided I don't even want the year on there at all. So I just did the math, counted out my letters, and realized that the S is pretty much the center. Um, and then I just counted it out and centered curiosities at the bottom. And this will be my border for my cabinet of curiosities. Um, I do have all the patterns from 2022. There was a free stitch along at that point, but you can buy this pattern from her in her Etsy shop. So check that out if you're interested. And I will continue to show you my, uh, my um, progress on this as I go along. Now, as far as this stitch along, um, she does give recommendations on what DMC colors that she would recommend. And when she does her stitch alongs initially, she also puts kits together with the fabric and the flosses and all of that good stuff. And she actually has some cute needle minders that she gets made for her stitch alongs as well. Um, so you could definitely jump in on one of those at some point. For this one, you know, it's like two years ago. And at the time I didn't buy the kit. I just um, pulled out DMC flosses that kind of matched. So that's what I am working with. And I have my little baggie of goodies right here for all the colors that I will need in the stitch along. So like I said, as I progress on this one, I will share my progress with you. All right, 
last cross stitch update um, I showed in floss tube 60 that I went I was in the Halloween spirit which obviously the cabinet of curiosities is also Halloween but I have this amazing book called spooktacular by Romy's creations and she has a lot of really cute Halloween charts in there and I showed three that I was trying to decide between and I did decide on one and I got it stitched so first, let me show you the book. This is the book Spooktacular Cross Stitch, Volume 1, and this is by Romina Petrucci. Um, she goes by Romy's Creations. She has a Facebook group. She also has an amazing Instagram feed that you can follow. She's been doing free charts like every Monday, so if you like her style, you should definitely check out her Facebook group and her Instagram feed um, and get those free charts from her. She is super cool. Um, I met her in person in St. Charles a couple years ago. Um, super sweet, super friendly and just an amazing designer. So as I mentioned last time, I was completely in love with this cute little happy Halloween sign with the, with the candy corn. Um, my husband does not like candy corn, but I do. So I know there are two camps on that and I know that some of you will not be in my camp with liking candy corn, but I love it. I especially love candy corn mixed with peanuts. So if you haven't tried that, do because it tastes just like a payday bar. A payday bar. Um, so if you like payday bars, candy corn and peanuts where it's at. So anyway, this is the design I just chose to stitch. Um, it was pretty quick and simple. It's only 98 by 38. Um, so on 14 count, it finished around like three by six, I think. Um, so here is my finished stitch. This is more than three by six, maybe three by eight. Uh, I, this is on a hand dyed 14 count, eight o'clock. Um, I do not know the color for this cloth. I'm so sorry, you guys. I know that I got it at like an estate sale and um, they just had a whole bunch of stuff and it wasn't marked and so I just picked it up because I liked the color and so I pulled it out to do the Happy Halloween. Now, I do have enough of this cloth that I could stitch another one of those designs on it. And so I'm thinking about doing that because if I do, then I think I could probably like turn it into either a reversible sign or a little pillow or something for Halloween. Um, I think that'd be super cute. So I haven't quite decided on that yet, but we'll see how it goes and see what I decide to do. I'm not sure, but I love this little stitch. It is so, so cute. And again, this is in the Spooktacular Volume 1 book by Romina Portucci. She goes by Romy, uh, by Romy's Creations, and she is a super cool designer, so check her out. All right, that is my cross stitch update. The only other cross stitch related update I have is just to remind you that I did start putting some of my project bags in my Etsy shop, and I've made a few more, so I just want you to see those kind of in person, I guess, or on camera. Um, this is the flag bag, flag bag, <laughs> and it is a nice little zipper, cute scalloped zipper, and then it comes with a floss clutch that has a snap closure. It is lined with the white fleece so it will not pill. It's got a cute little ribbon for your needles. Um, this is a little pocket to put your magnets in so you can stick your needle minder on that. For more information on how I use my bags and how this all works, um, check out Floss Tube 60. I went through in great detail of just how I use my bags and what I like put in them and how the floss clutches work and all of that good stuff. So I have two different of the um, flag bags in the Etsy shop right now. One of them has kind of like a hidden zipper with a white zipper, and the other one has the gold zipper. So check those out, and if you're interested, um, feel free to place an order. I usually ship within three days. And then I also have this cute little notions bag, which is just some sewing machines and pins and buttons. It's really nice construction, it has a vinyl front so you can put, I like to put my patterns in there so I can just like leave my pattern in the bag and see through the clear vinyl um, to do my chart. And then it's not like sitting on my lap where I might accidentally, you know, the cat jump on it and rip it or whatever. So it's just really nice to keep it in the bag with the vinyl front. And then I also have this really cool hot air balloon bag. Now this one was actually a panel from a Colorado shop hop. So this is a very limited edition um, fabric. So if you if you love hot air balloons, make sure you check this one out. And again, all of those are in my Etsy shop along with a few others. Along with those, um, I plan on adding in some Christmas themed bags fairly soon. So if you are in the Christmas stitching spirit, make sure you check out my Etsy shop in the next couple of weeks and I should have some Christmas themed project bags in there for you as well.
let's talk quilting. So quilting progress, oh my goodness, I had three quilts going and all of a sudden I'm down to one. I'm super excited about that because it means I can start planning my next sew along. It also means I can start looking and seeing if there's another quilt that I wanna do. I usually keep three quilts going at a time, um, but my third quilt that I had going was the Moda Blockheads 5 and it's wrapping up this month as well. So starting in August, I'm not gonna have any quilts going if I don't start something. So, oh my goodness, the horror, right? So I need to start something. Um, I plan on doing another sew along, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But before then, let me show you what I have gotten done. First up is Lori Holt, How to Build a Scarecrow. This one is finished. The top is finished. And I plan on going quilting on Wednesday, which is tomorrow Yay! at my brother's. And he is going to help me um, get this one and a few of the other ones that I've done so long so far um, quilted. And then I'll get them all finished and bound and it'll be amazing. So first up to share is the How to Build a Scarecrow. And actually, the second one that I'm going to be quilting, I can't share a photo of because the last video for it is posting on Thursday. That is the Dutch Chocolate Quilt Sew Along. That's the quilt that I'm doing for my stepdaughter. And the last video for that series posts Thursday. But that quilt top is also finished, actually, because I do record those a little bit in advance just to give myself a little leeway just in case something happens. Um, and so I'll be quilting it on Wednesday as well. So super excited to get that done for Callie. And I know that she's going to be excited to get that on her bed when she moves in August. Since these quilts are done, that means I have some time to plan my next sew along, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago. So I did a little poll on my YouTube community tab. Hopefully you got your vote in. And it was decided, which I was kind of leaning this way too. I actually... I threw out three choices. I either was gonna do another quilt out of the Perfect 10 Quilt book, which is amazing. There's a lot of them in there. And a couple of those quilts I think would be really good for charity quilts. They look like they go together fairly quickly um, and I could like make them a little smaller so they'd be great for charity quilts. And I may still do that at some point and just kind of share my process on that. Um, but then I also threw out the Cut Right quilt templates, which was um, for the double wedding ring quilt. And I really am looking forward to doing that. I, it's on my bucket list and I want to use a lot of my Lori Holt scraps up, my smaller, my smaller scraps that I have for that. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing that quilt. But it sounds like everyone, including myself really, is most excited about the Lori Holt Be Happy quilt. I know I have heard from a lot of people that said, I started this and never finished it. Or I have the first row done and now I am like stalled out on this quilt. So hopefully this will invigorate you to get started again. Or if you haven't started it like me, you can start it up and maybe get this finished um, in the next couple of months. So I am gonna be starting the Lori Holt Be Happy happy quilt so long starting August 1st and I'm gonna switch up a little bit from the way she did her sew along just because there's a couple things that I like doing in advance between now and then download the cutting guide from Riley Blake's website gather your supplies make sure you have everything you need and stay tuned because August 1st I'll be releasing the first video for the sew along series um, before I do plan on putting together the schedule and the breakdown sheet and putting that on my Google Drive and I'll share that link in the August 1st video as well so you will have that for your reference and then like I said before this sew along starts just make sure you download the um, cutting guide from the Raleigh Blake website and get all of your fabrics together I am not going to be pre-cut for this sew along so that's one thing that I normally do with her sew alongs if, if I'm gonna try to stay in line with Lori's schedule then I usually pre-cut all of my stuff and bag it and get everything cut and um, sorted in advance but I am not doing that for this sew along I'm gonna be cutting as I go so each week I'll be cutting out the pieces tracing the shapes getting everything together and um, be able to get this quilt together in that manner instead. So a little bit different of approach and that way you can kind of see the differences and the different approach that I take um, for doing a sew along with just cut as I go instead of cutting everything in advance. The other fun thing with this sew along that I'm going to be doing, I'll just let's do a short little segment for each video, is I'm going to start doing the Be Happy puzzle with this quilt along as well. So there is a thousand piece puzzle that is the design for this quilt. 
And I thought it would be fun to just kind of put a few pieces in together and kind of talk through what we're going to be doing each week while I'm putting together a little puzzle. Um, and I'll keep those segments really short, obviously. But we'll be, so I'll be putting the puzzle together at the same time I put the quilt together. It will be interesting to see which one gets done first. So that is kind of my approach to the next sew along. I hope you do join me. Um, and obviously I'll be mentioning this more in the upcoming videos and talking more about it between now and August 1st. And then we will get to stitching and sewing on August 1st with our Be Happy um, quilt. With all of that, the final thing that I just kind of want to mention again is that I am going to be going quilting tomorrow at my brother's. I'm super excited about that. And as a result of that quilting, um, I promised you guys way back when I did the mercantile sampler that when I went to do the finishing on that quilt that I would show you how I do my rickrack trim in the binding for those large quilts. So watch for that quilting video to be posting on my channel soon. I don't have an exact date on that, but as soon as I know, I will let you know, or it might just appear on the channel. Who knows well, how that's going to come out. So with all of that, I really hope that you have been finding some time for crafting and creating. I hope you find joy in all of that you do. I hope that you are finding some inspiration, if not in my video, then someone else you're watching. If you have a favorite floss tuber or quilter that you watch, please share a link to their um, channel in the comments below. I really like to find new quilters and stitchers to follow and watch on YouTube. Um, if you like the video, please just give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't and hit the bell for notifications so you know when my videos do post. I typically post on Tuesdays and Thursdays so that'll kind of give you a rough estimate of when to expect videos from me. Again, I hope that you're finding something joyous in your part of the world and you're staying safe and healthy. And until next time, happy stitching.